Hello everyone, Gebatron here. I had a unique thing happen to me recently. A viewer contacted me first in the comments of a video and then via Discord. He wanted to ask a few questions about Hell Let Loose, but wanted to be able to talk to me directly and be looking at a map while we talked. Well, lucky for us, Discord is perfect for communicating and there is a website called StratSketch that not only allows you to both look at the same picture of a map, but also lets multiple people draw on that map. So the following video is just going to be that conversation. I'm editing out some of the less relevant stuff we talked about, but I think he had some really good questions. I asked him if I could record our session to potentially use it for a video, and he said yes, but didn't want me to use his name, so that's why you'll see his name edited out. I can appreciate that, but I also think it's a bit of a shame because he's an excellent example of someone who is out here trying to improve on his play and increase his knowledge of the game, not only for himself, but for the people he plays with and the greater community. So cheers to you, even though we don't don't know your name. There are timestamps if you'd like to skip around, and I hope you enjoy our conversation about Hell Let Loose. Yeah. Ah, there we go. And so, let's see here. Can you see me drawing on the map? Yeah. Oh, badass. Okay. But I can't draw, I think. No. <laughs> I wonder if I can... How about now? Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> so the main question uh, I did have that no one can answer is like, if it's like this, um, this would be the four point, right? Uh, that's a stupid color. <laughs> no, I, I can see it though. Yeah, but can it also be like um, like this? No. So it's always uh, uh, four by four like this, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, like uh, a, a lot of videos or a lot of content creators or people who make guides get this wrong. And it's the verbiage that they use and it causes some confusion. Uh, can you get rid of your squares real quick? And I'll, yeah. I'll show you. Okay, like this. And then we'll go like this. And then like this. I won't go across the whole map, but these are actually called zones. Each two columns, like in, in Herkin Forest, because of the way the map is oriented, each like this green area is a zone each yeah. zone has three sectors which is what you were drawing out earlier so here okay. would here would be our sector this is this is a non-active sector this is also a non-active sector and then down here we have our active sector each sector yeah. contains a potential strong point okay so, so like right now, Lumberyard, Call Trail, and the Scar, and so on, are the active strong points. But, you know, um, like, let me change different color here. Like, there is a strong point, like, you know, here and here. I, I don't know what they're called in this map, but, like, up here, you know, is North Pass. Even though they're not active, they're still there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So the sectors will always be like in one of these grids or below, right? Four yep. by four. Yep. Yeah. And it's always, That's... always four by four. Yeah, but it will never be a, like a crossing like this, right? Somewhere here. No. Nope. Yeah, that that so, explains a lot. <laughs> yeah, so maybe another good way to say it is that, yeah, it's always going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. In this in this example, you know, there's other maps that go a different direction, but. Yeah. So it's easier to picture it uh, mentally uh, in game then. So 
doing the squad leading part on console, I think defending is the what we're lacking. So defending it's hard to get people to defend on PC too. Everyone wants to, you know. Attack. Yeah, I guess you get as much kills as defender as attacker. I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes so... even more, you know, because you're you're not exposing yourself as much necessarily, you know. Yeah. So let's do it like this then, because they control this. But if defending then, uh, so how is the best way to set this up, this up then? Because I guess if defending, this is the point to stay in, right? Yeah, yeah, that that is the, like in a warfare mode match, that's the yeah. active sector. So anybody in, in those four squares counts, you know, towards yeah. the cap weight. So how would we set this up for defending if I'm the squad leader? Oh, shit. Like for it garrisons? Should... Yeah, and for garrisons and stuff. Okay. Let's um... say I have a full squad. Uh, I want to defend this part. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm going to zoom in here. Now, how I would do this... Um is I would put a garrison up here. Uh, uh, there's different ways to do things. So it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm the only person who has good ideas, you know, like I, I play with people who sometimes think my garrisons are a little too predictable. Uh, uh, yeah. Just, this is just general, you know, you, you're going to have to do what you, what you want to do. But I would normally like, if just looking at this on the map, I would put a garrison probably somewhere up in this area because there's a lot of structures up there that are easy to defend. Um, like there's some pillboxes to the south, uh, you know, both, uh, let me get a different color. There's some pillboxes here to the south. Just one second, there. You yeah, know, look. there's those two pillboxes there. There's the radio tower up here, and there's a lot of trenches around here, you know? So yeah. that garrison will give you a lot to work with here. And it will also cut off if anyone, if the enemy is trying to, you know, let's say they got this, these buildings here, they're trying to put uh, an offensive garrison up here. If I'm working up here at the radio tower, they're going to have to be further away because that will lock that garrison because we're within a hundred meters of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's also um, there's also some trench works over here if we decide we need to go on the offensive and take that garrison out. So that'd probably uh, be the first place that I would think about putting a garrison. I would not put one in the strong point. I don't like doing that. I think a half track is better if you're going to put something in the strong point. Yeah, I've noticed that also, to be honest, when they put it in the strong point, then they just destroy the opportunity to, to put others up in other places. <laughs> right, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you know, everything <laughs> has to be 200 meters away, and it's better to have two garrisons, you know, within 100 meters than it is to have one right in the middle, you know what I mean? Because that's the area they're all coming for anyway, they're... they're going to be coming to the strong point they're going to try to surround it so eventually you're you're just going to lose the garrison in the strong point either to a bombing run or to a sneaky squad that gets in there you know it's better to have them around the outside so yeah another place i would maybe have it boy that's tough you know maybe i would put one back here and then maybe another one up here near this crossroads you, you know, something like that. Yeah. And then I'd probably have another one back here. Uh, you know, just something like that to give yourself options. Uh, one good thing about... Uh, about this garrison down here in the bottom right is that, you know, the only... It, there's a roadway here, so you're going to be able to deal with any traffic, any armor that's trying to come in. Uh, that'd be a good oh. thing for this one in the top, too, is, you know, 
you, you'd be able to cover these roads for any armor or recon vehicles because you know Herc and Forest because of you know all the trees and shit makes it harder for armor to move it makes it more predictable where enemy traffic is going to be yeah but overall um, uh, your squad stays in the the area right uh, the strong point uh no i i don't spend a ton of time in the strong point on defense well there's a caveat to that if, if there's if there's two squads defending i like to go out and look for the enemy you know get their ops you know uh let's yeah okay let, let me let me draw let me do some undoing here so if i'm hanging out in the you know we're we got we got enemy coming in somewhere from the north right yeah um, I'm, I'm not gonna sit in here and just let them hit me and hit me and hit me because eventually they're gonna gain the advantage you know even if we have better positions, just eventually they're going to win. You know, flip of the coin, flip of the coin, flip of the coin. Eventually they're going to come out on top and they're going to gain ground and they'll be able to push in. So what I like to do is if I know where they're coming from, I like to, let me get a different color here. I like to push out and meet them. Yeah, oh, okay. That way we keep the fighting out of the strong point and then eventually you know if i if i if i win this fight and i keep winning this fight you know and i can get my op up after i destroy their op you know i'll, I'll push all the way to find that garrison eventually or at least a part of my squad you know maybe send something like an automatic rifleman and an assault player out you know keep my mg towards the rear if i have an yeah, okay. mg or my rifles, you know, closer to the strong point. Oh, okay. That that's how I I like to do it. Yeah. I, I don't it, like I don't like allowing myself to get surrounded or to get pushed back. I like I like going out and meeting them. Yeah. Yeah. Seems fair. <laughs> it's a lot to this game. I'm not used to it, so What else? Oh, that was the main questions to be honest. Uh, <laughs> it was not much what not that much, but yeah, getting a squad to follow you, it's not that easy either. But right. right. I yeah. guess the squad leader, yeah, he has talked to the commander, the squad, point out the soldiers and tanks and stuff, right? And uh, the, the rest leader. of the squad do the uh, shooting and the dirty work, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it depends on your loadout. You know, if I'm rolling with the, the SMG, you know, the submachine gun as a squad leader, um, you know, you get smokes too and, and grenades. So if if you're satisfied with your OP, you know, and it's not under a lot of danger, I like to lead assaults from time to time uh, because yeah, okay. you do have an SMG, you do have smoke grenades, you do have regular, you know, fragmentation grenades. So you're really well equipped for an assault. Yeah, that's as, true. as well as other things, you know. But if I have a rifle, of course I, I don't, I don't do that as much. But yeah, it's not, go ahead. It's not that hard, but still, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, squad leading is probably the hardest thing to do. I think it's harder than commander because you have to relay information both ways. You know, you have to relay information up to the commander and to other squad leaders. And you also have to relay information down. And no other role has that. Like if you're playing as a rifleman, your information just goes up. You know, if you're playing commander, your information just goes down. And squad leader, you have to go both ways. So it's it's really tough, I think. Yeah, but I'm used to that also because of work. So. Yeah, what do you do for work? Oh, we work at store so but we use com radios all the time. Okay. So it's a lot of shatters yeah i use radio yeah. at work too so it's, it's easier yeah. for me than it is for some other people but yeah listening speaking at the same time it's mm -hmm. like trick of the trade i guess <laughs> yeah but i like the part of squad leading because that's what separates this game from others uh, mm -hmm. it usually works people play this game just because of 
that reason, I guess. Yeah, I think squad leading is is one of the best roles because um, you you get a lot of control over what's going on. You get to build your OP, which will usually help keep your squad together because it's a it's the it's a fast spawn, so everyone wants to get in the game fast. You know. Um, yeah. And then you get to build garrisons, which give you a little bit of control over like the overall strategy. Like, cause if 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 I build a garrison down here, you know, eventually someone's going to spawn on that, whether it's us or not, you know, and they're going to do this thing, you know. Yeah. And if that's what I want, if I want someone to do that, all I have to do is build that garrison, whether I'm the one that's going to attack from there or not. So we could be defending Call Trail, you know, and I can, I can run down here real quick, build a garrison, run back, and eventually an attack's going to happen from there. So, so I feel like I get a lot of control, even though I'm not physically the one doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it helps and as soon as uh, if our team is, like, capturing this area now. Uh, we just abandon the previous, right? We take down the garrisons or they commanded us and we move on to the next one. Uh, well, you can have up to eight garrisons. Yeah. So... You know, I like I like keeping at least one towards the rear here. Let's say it's just, let's say it's just in shit. Wrong, wrong thing. Let's say it's just inside lumberyard. Let's just say that's what it is. And then we got we got our one up here. Where do we have our other one down here? And then here, right? So that's only one, two, three. Four. That's only four. You know, we still got four more to go. So let's say yeah. we push into the enemy territory and we get an offensive garrison up somewhere here and then one up here. So now we got six. We end up taking the scar. We put another one up here. Uh, you know, I wouldn't start taking them down until I need to, I guess is what how I would play it. Yeah. And then when I uh, would... Let, okay, so now we take salient, let's say, and we got... We got a garrison, eh, let's just say here, right? Now, the first one I would get rid of would not be the one back at Lumberyard. I would probably get rid of one of the ones that call trail. You know what I mean? Yeah, he has to that's have how, the backup. Th yeah, yeah, that's how I would do it. Uh, let's Yeah, let's say I would just get rid of that one. So I guess uh, the commander is the one who can also take it down if needed, so... Right, yeah. At that point, that would become a commander issue. Yeah. Something they would do, because, uh, you know, I would assume that everyone else would either be at the scar or salient. And the commander yeah. can either do that through a commander order, or he can physically take down any garrison. A squad leader can only take down the garrisons that they placed... A commander can take down any garrison. Yeah. So a yeah, commander, have... yeah, commander is much better suited to managing the garrisons. Yeah. Okay. And we have that problem on console now, where we have commanders just destroying every garrison for us, <laughs> just trolling the game. Oh no shit. Yeah. Like it's the... <laughs> like they're doing it to be trolls. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's and... a real big problem on console right now too. Is there's there's no way to deal with people who are disrupting the game. Like on PC, you know, all these communities have servers which are run by admins. Who, if someone team kills, you know, I mean, not like an accidental team kill, but if someone is team killing someone on purpose, they get kicked right away. If someone is trolling, taking garrisons down, they get kicked. You know, like that's not happening on console, and that's really problematic. Yeah, but yeah, Team Seventeen wanted the money, I guess. Yeah, they were in a hurry to get that out. I, I thought they were gonna support it quicker. So I, whenever, when everyone asked me like, "Hey, how do you feel about it coming to console?" I was like, "Well, I'm, I think that's great," but it turns out I don't think they were ready. No, nah. they should have waited a little while longer. Yeah, it was Team Seventeen who pushed it, right? Not Black Matters. I don't know. I mean, if I had yeah. if I had to speculate, I would probably say yeah, maybe it was Team Seventeen. But let's hope they 
refocus on console because they have such an uh, opportunity now when Battlefield failed. Oh yeah, as a <laughs> for sure, for sure. And anybody on console looking for something with just a little bit more authenticity, you know, you know, with yeah. just a little bit more. I hate using the word realism, but I mean, Hell Let Loose is a little more realistic than like Battlefield. It is more authentic. It is more grounded. Yeah. And and mm. and the whole teamwork thing, you know, the roles are designed so you you kind of have to work together at least a little to accomplish some of your goals. And and I think a lot yeah. of people are looking for that right now in gaming. That's why I play the medic normally. Uh... It's uh, they appreciate you <laughs> for doing oh, it. So. Absolutely, I love having a medic that, around. That's new to the whole FPS for me. People being happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that it's a very good game in my opinion. Mm, it's it's one of my uh, favorites of all time. It's got a lot of problems, but yeah, you know I'm I'm here for it. Yeah, let's hope they sort it, everything out. So. Mm. So console also can get the update 10. I think we're on update 9, right? You're on 11, soon 12. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm not sure what number. I think I think the one on console is actually a little bit of a Frankenstein. Yeah. Um, boy, it might it might even only just be update 8. Yeah, it's I still can... in er early access, according to PC standards <laughs> yeah i know i know we or i don't ask that question because i don't play on console and i don't i don't know if a lot of my audience is console players i guess maybe i should find out but uh i know some of the other guys like we have this discord channel that we talk in and uh, uh a lot of the other guys ask questions about you know when's console getting an update i'm getting a lot of questions about console stuff and they keep telling us yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. It's going to be soon. It's going to be soon. But it's been kind of a long time. Yeah, <laughs> you know? seven or eight months or something. <laughs> yeah, there's a different company working on the console version to uh, port it over. It's starting to get even... I mean, I don't play on console. I, my channel doesn't even, like, cater to, you know, the console players. Like, I don't know the controls. I don't. I don't... You know, I'll say, in order to do this action, you need to click the right mouse button. You know, I, I don't add those console controls even into my videos. And I'm still like, hey, guys, you know, we have this huge audience out there that it's it's been long enough. And they're having a lot of problems over there. You guys need to do something. Because the Facebook groups are growing also, the PC, uh, the PlayStation, Xbox group and stuff. Yeah. Really hope because we are rubber banding fifty percent of the matches and I hate it. <laughs> On infantry too, I I see a lot of complaints about vehicles. Yeah, the vehicle is, is yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can't drive. <laughs> that's that's terrible. I mean, yeah, it. I feel like they're just pissing in the wind a little bit, you know, because like Battlefield did not turn out the way it, you know a lot of players wanted it to so they're looking for something else you know and then they come over to hell let loose and i think a lot of people stay you know but nowhere near as many as would if the game ran well you know yeah if there were some more quality of life things there and yeah i mean like why would you why would you throw money away like that yeah so let's hope team 17 is good at listening at the player base like black matter was i don't know when black matters quit i don't know when team 17 bought the game from black matters yeah it wasn't too long it was it was the beginning of 2022 i think yeah okay and so they, had got... a, they had a contract that was for like a year and a half i think and we're already That's... four months in so we're talking about just a little over a year that yeah. black matter will still be a part of it and i don't know if if Black Matter is going to renegotiate a new contract or if they're just going to pull out. And that's kind of what I think they're going to do. Pull out and go work on something else, you know. Let's hope Black Matters have learned from this game, do a new great game and keep the game. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in what Black Matter is going to do next. Because I think Black Matter 
did make a lot of mistakes. Um, but I really think that they're going to learn from it. You know, and like if yeah. they if they made Hell Let Loose and it's as popular as it is, and it's like I said, it's one of my favorite games of all time already, and it, I know how how much better it really could have been. You know, there's their second one, like all the mistakes they made, they're gonna learn from it, and the, their next game is gonna be like really really good. It's gonna be built yeah. really well. At least so, I'm confident it is. It's gonna be. Yeah. But this game is a very good game to learn, like squad leading and stuff. Yeah. If ever squads comes to console also. Yeah, I wonder if squad will. I don't think Postscriptum ever will, but squad might. Yeah. Or Escape from, what's it called? Tarkov. Tarkov? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't played that. I really should check that out. Have you played that? Yeah, they say... No. But they say it's a very good game. It's like PvE, PvE, right? Or it was, anyway. <laughs> I know very little about it. They say it's a great game. It has a big player base still, so it must be great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, and Axis, that's the German, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Because <laughs> I tried that the infant... No. The, uh, those who shoot stuff from here or something. <laughs> Artillery? Yeah. And I downloaded that app get the miles right and i didn't know what side i was on so oh <laughs> that screwed out everything up <laughs> yep axis is german and allied is us and then of course soviet is russian yeah we don't have the soviet yet yeah <laughs> yeah and i don't know i don't i mean I, they're gonna add the british at some point yeah i don't know if they're gonna add italians or romanians or anything else like that though i kind of think that once um black matter is done with their contract i think that's just where hell let loose is basically going to stay uh, and yeah. then and then they'll work on hell let loose too and they'll build you know on its own they'll just build a new game it'll be similar of course but it'll be new and different and have yeah hopefully be better built you know yeah, uh, I really hope so, and let's hope, like say, let's say Team 17 does something about everything, that would be great though, so, yeah. so defending, yeah, I think I got that part. Uh, yeah, a lot of people, when they defend, you know, uh, the best advice I think I could give you and I don't know if this is a problem you have or not, but like with call trail here, you know, a lot of squads will just stay like in this area here. And then yeah. what happens is the enemy, you know, um, they come like this and they come like this and then they, they build their garrison, um, you know, up here. And so then they come like this too. And you get squeezed in, and that's yeah. that's that's how you lose because you have nowhere to go, right? The only the only way you can fight against this is if now you spawn somewhere back here and come in like this. Well, you're at a huge yeah. disadvantage like that. So the best way for you to defend, in my opinion, is to branch out, branch out, branch out. You know, yeah, but as soon as you see the enemy capturing this area, right? Mm -hmm. Is it better to fall back just to get the uh, points over them so you start taking yeah. it back? Yeah, absolutely. If 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 they're outnumbering you, you know, or they're out cap waiting you, yeah, then you gotta you gotta hightail it back in. Yeah. Okay. Because you need you need that extra bonus that the strong point gives you. Yeah. Um, unless unless I mean it dep it kind of depends too on what's going on in the overall picture. Um, if if you're alone, if you're the only squad back here, and you're losing the point, and you're in the point, you know, well then the yeah. problem then the problem, you know, if if you're in here. 
and you're still losing, then the problem is that you got too many people on offense, and there's not anything you can do about it other than say, hey, we need more people back here, you know? Yeah. But if you, if your squad is all spread out, you know, like, oh shit, wrong thing. Like if you got a couple members out here and you got a couple members out here and then just, you know, you're looking through your binoculars in the point and then you start losing, yeah, then have a couple of your guys come back, especially if they're not in any sort of combat. Yeah, and that tagging part, I think, is kind of easy for me anyway because I uh, I can move this and that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. How do you do that arrow thingy? Um, I cl <laughs> the okay on the the top right. There's like the three rows of little circles there. The far left of the middle one, and then where it says N type, I click on arrow. Oh, there we go. What I see all the time is like people will go. This is how people always attack on console anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the, the quickest way to a point is straight line, you know, so. But even if I'm soloing or something, mm -hmm. I seem to go like this, and then I go, <laughs> this is my yeah. <laughs> long road because this I've, I have learned, like, this is a hot area, however I see it. <laughs> yeah. It, so by taking this way... It's kind of safe, but I can, because I'm always solo also, I can get the strong point ups, yeah. Oh, the garrisons up yeah. down there or whatever. And it's kind of a big problem when everybody's, like I said, attacking like that, because it doesn't give so much protection when going from the side. <laughs> yeah, um, there is... There is something to be said about a frontal attack, though, because if if you're not doing that, you yeah. know, they're going to do that. Yeah. And so the ideal situation here is that you meet them, you know, somewhere in the middle, and now they uh, yeah. now that they're not getting to you. So so even though you want to go on a flank, uh. Like so, here here's your combat that's taking place right there, you know, and it's just a meat grinder, right? Well, that's okay, yeah. in in my opinion, because that's that meat grinder, it keeps the fighting off of your strong point, which you yeah. don't you don't want it on your strong point. It also keeps the enemy focused on that fight, you know. That's true. Because they they can't just stop, because then you'll you'll just waltz right into their point, right? So it's always good to have at least one squad taking that really easy, totally predictable path. Then, yeah. then you know, you have... Oh, whoops. Damn. <laughs> then you have your, you know, your nice, sweet-ass flanking maneuvers, you know, especially <laughs> if if these people are wise enough to build, you know a garrison or two on their way. Yeah. You know? But but if would... this if this isn't here in the middle, you know, if the, if this isn't here, then then these don't work as well on the outside. Yeah, that's true. And that's the second problem also. Uh I have done this, right? Uh built uh that uh garrison uh, let's say here, okay. and everybody that's going frontal mm -hmm. is spawning <laughs> on this behind this tent. <laughs> right? Yeah. That that's just a yeah. That happens. That's... That happens on PC too, and that's that sucks because yeah because that's not there for everyone because all that happens now is is you take you took your front line that was here, you know, and and you just made it you know, over here. Yeah. And what you want to do is you want to keep your front line stable so this is actually a flanking maneuver. 
Yeah. You know? So this is actually a flanking maneuver. Because if if this isn't happening in the middle and this gets abandoned, then all the enemy has to do is just shift. You know? Yeah. Or just move one guy into the uh, call trail and we lose that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now you're everybody is, you know, 400 meters away. And, you know. Yeah. That's the, like, the commander's job to tell what squad to spawn on their flanking point, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that would be, um, if you had a good commander that was aware of all that and understood all that. Yeah, if yeah. you were to be like, you know, um, let's say you've got Able Squad. Able Squad is fighting here. Well, that's that looks awful juicy, you know, for them to spawn down here because they're tired of getting their asses kicked. Yeah. But but they it's really hard for those squads that are getting their asses kicked to understand how important that is. You know, th that ass kicking that they're taking here has allowed another squad. Damn it, I keep on doing the wrong. <laughs> has allowed that other squad the time to make this move. Yeah. You know? And because the enemy is so focused on this, trying to get through, or the enemy is trying to do this, or this, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's me and a buddy that play, so we are two man squad. So it's the perfect size for a flanking squad, I guess, because he can just provide me with the materials to build. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, but don't. Don't sell this fight too short, no. you know, like, like that's still important. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's too bad that so many people do it until of course, you know, you build this garrison here and then everybody spawns on that and it ruins everything you were trying to do in the first place. But yeah, but because if you do, we do, go ahead. Yeah. We will lose the call trailers if they do that. That's yeah, potentially. In a small squad, what can I do then? Uh, like, let's say we are only two people, a two-man squad. We are, it's not that much we can do, right? Except uh, doing stuff like this. Yeah, a two-man squad isn't suited for heavy combat. You're you're totally right, you know. There are yeah. some things you can do as a two-man squad. Obviously, you can do logistics, building a lot of garrisons, you know, building your nodes. Uh, you can ferry supplies. Um, you can also act as kind of like a recon squad, whether you are a recon squad or not, you can still, you know, be disruptive back here. Uh, you yeah. can, you can do a lot of reporting on what you see. You know, I see a lot of, you know, Hey, this is a Baker squad. I see a lot of enemy traffic moving from East to West up here in this area. You know, Hey, we got, it we got a, tiger heading up this road back here you know you can do a lot of stuff like that uh depending on what you are like if, if you're a squad leader and a machine gunner you can support other squads yeah i mean if if you're an engineer or an anti-tank guy uh you can lay mines in this rear area you know and disrupt the traffic that goes to the front line you're much better suited for those types of activities than taking on another squad straight on. Because if another squad's got six players and you only got two, you're going to get your ass kicked. Yeah. You know? So a minimum should be like a free man squad, right? It feels like it to cover out of the ground. Uh, a two -man. Yeah, a three man squad would allow. Yeah, you could you obviously do more with a three man squad than a two man squad. Yeah, it's still not like super capable still not super versatile but it depends on what your composition is yeah so i guess i will jump into the game and see how much rubber banning i can do so. <laughs> <laughs> all right well you got any other questions or anything else you want to talk about no i think i got this the rest i got from your video so <laughs> okay, cool well i'm glad uh, thank you so much for watching them man I, i'm i'm glad you're getting some information out of them yeah so I'm, I'll start linking them in the Facebook groups when people <laughs> ask questions. So, <laughs> Awesome. 
Awesome. Yeah. Well, I have been recording this. I think I might make a video out of it because you asked a lot of questions that a lot of people ask, have questions about. So do you mind if I make a video out of it? No, nah, you can do that. Okay. Take my name out of, uh, of the user, if it's okay. <laughs> you don't want your name to be a part of it? No. Okay. That would be great. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no problem. I'll just like a black box over your name up in the left-hand corner there. That would be awesome. Okay. But cheers for all the help. Yeah, man. I, like You got my Discord. You can send me a message anytime you want. Yeah. And let's hope we get that cross-play at some point. That... <laughs> I don't think we're going to get cross-play from console to PC. I don't think we are. Let's just... How about we just get that first console update and we'll go yeah. from there. <laughs> Ah, that's so true. <laughs> but yeah, cheers for your time and your videos. Yeah, well, hey, this this was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce. Yeah, me too. So take care. Yep. Have a good day. Bye. Y you too. Hey. Thanks for sticking around. If you made it this far in the video, uh, if you have questions about Hell Let Loose, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Check the description for a link to the Strat Sketch website, as well as links to help support the channel and a link to the Hell Let Loose community I am a member of. Thanks again for watching, and see you in the next one.